So first and foremost, thank you for allowing me to share space with you. It means a lot, and I'm really honored to be here amongst everybody today. There's a quote that I'll share with you that's really close to my heart, and it's by somebody named Sultan Valida. And the quote goes like this, that every human being must be born twice, once from the mom's womb, and the second time from their own physical existence, from their own physical body. So my story is somewhat of that rebirth from my own physical existence. So I was seven years old. I was born here in Mission, BC, around seven, the age of seven. I remember sitting at the edge of the bed with my father. And my father said to me, you're going to India. And you can imagine, you're at the age of seven. My sister's four, so both of us are going together. We're going to be in a boarding school. I'm not comprehending what all this means, but I remember one sentence. And he said, I want you to have your education in India because I want you to be somebody. The next thing I remember is we are in India. My sister and I are sitting at the edge of a bed. If you could imagine a room of about 100 beds in one dormitory, every single bed done up the exact same way. And there's no kids in the dormitory yet. They're all in school, so it's just my sister and I sitting there. And I'm holding on to her hand. And in front of us, there's two metal trunks. One trunk says S550, and the other trunk says P551. I become S550, and my sister becomes P551 for the next eight years. The next thing I remember throughout that boarding school, the very next morning we woke up, still have no comprehension of what's going on. Uh, a lot of the thoughts I remember in my head are, are they coming back to get us? Um, I'm not sure how long we're going to be here. So you can imagine when you were seven years old, how much did you really comprehend about the world around you? All I remember was, I need to be somebody. So the next morning we wake up. My sister now is in a completely different dormitory in a different age group. I wake up in the morning, put my clothes on, you know, put my uniform on, walk outside, and we're in this lineup. And in the lineup, we, our buttons are being checked, shoe polishing is being checked, our ple pleats of our skirts straight, that's being checked. So we're in a uniform checkup line. And as I pull up, the warden takes a look at me, and there's this staircase that goes to the left of me, and she slaps me. And I remember tumbling. Sorry, I didn't realize that there's still some healing there. I go tumbling down those stairs. And I honestly didn't even recall that particular scenario until I started writing my book with Julie, because all of these things sometimes on the peripheral you forget. And I remember standing in the lineup. I remember being slapped. But I didn't remember tumbling down the stairs until I really started writing. Because then all the peripheral stuff comes up, because you're trying to get really descriptive in your book. No comprehension why. So I remember coming back up, and she said to me, I didn't have a button on my shirt. And I hadn't taken a bath that morning. I had no idea that the button needed to be there. I had no idea that I was supposed to bathe in the morning. And then I remember her picking me up. And just around the circumference of the table that you sit in front of, we used to have these metal water tanks. They were about yay high and about that circumference. And she picked me up and she dunked me full clothing into the water tank. That started my fear of water unbeknownst to me. I would spend the next eight years trying to comprehend what I was doing there. The other students, some would say, oh, our parents are getting divorced. That's why we're here. They would say, oh, my stepmom didn't like us, and they put us in boarding school. I complained about the food, complained about the teaching, complained about the actual boarding school experience. So eight years, I waited for my family to come pick us up. 
our parents would visit over the summer or we would visit with them here in Canada in the summer. But we always knew we were going back. You always had that feeling inside of you that you were going back to this place of where you felt abandoned and felt betrayed, anger, resentment, and yet there was no choice in the matter. In 1987, we came back to Canada. Again, I felt no choice. So I was leaving the family that I'd known for eight years, and I was coming back to Canada. I walked into, uh, my parents owned a corner store, a mini mart, and I walked into the store and the front page news that day was the PNE Fairgrounds. Um, there was this big battle or conflict over who owned the PNE Fairgrounds. And all I remember standing there thinking was, what were my parents thinking? Why would they bring me back to this country? What am I doing here? We had just come from the Blue Star operation in India when Indira Gandhi got assassinated. I had come from a civil war of people being pulled off trains and being burned alive and buses, and that was front page news. A p and &E fairground, really? So again, the resentment and the anger and everything is building. And all of that came across towards my parents, because that's all I knew. That's the only place I could reflect it. Last year, I found myself on the couch of a life coach. I had been in strategic leadership roles within healthcare. And last year, there was a calling. There was a calling that was much different, a calling that said, I don't want to be in healthcare anymore. And when, we, when I was sitting on the couch of the life coach, she asked me, she said, what are you feeling right now? And I said to her, I feel lost, confused. I feel resentment. I feel betrayed. I feel an emptiness in my heart that I can't explain. And I'm at the peak of my career, and I don't know why. I should be happy. I'm making a really good income. I love working with physicians. I love the work that I did, but yet, there was this calling that was so strong that I didn't know what it was. And she said, when did you feel these feelings the last time? And that was at the age of seven, sitting at the edge of the bed. The same feelings came back full circle that many years later. The second pivotal question she asked me was, she said, when are you going to change your story of boarding school? And I was mad. I looked at her and I thought, I'm done this session. See you later. Because I was mad. How dare she tell me to change my story? That was the truthful story. That's what I experienced. So how dare you downplay my story? And I, But what I did say to her was, I'll think about it. And I thought, I'm never coming back to see her again ever. She's crazy. I went home, did not sleep that entire night, processing and reflecting of what does she mean by a different story? And then the aha moment started to come. It was like, wait a minute. If I didn't do improv theater in boarding school, I would not be comfortable getting on a stage and talking to 1,200 physicians, winging a conversation. If I was not in a dormitory of a hundred girls arm distance apart in their beds, I wouldn't know leadership, I wouldn't know conflict resolution, I wouldn't know team dynamics, and that had been my profession, was teaching physicians leadership, conflict resolution, all of this beautiful stuff that came from boarding school. So that's when my story started to change. And the way the story started to change was I started to recognize that I was wearing this costume. And we all do this. It's like we, we buckle up this. If you could imagine me standing here with a quilt and all the little patchwork, patches on the quilt, and every patch representing a story in your life. So my boarding school, my arranged marriage, my divorce, the children, my education, my experience, all little patches of this costume. And I had zippered it up right to here because that was who I was. Who I was was all the stories that had happened to me. 
And then the, everybody else was so awesome at fixing that costume for me. They would put on a special bow tie by saying, GV went to boarding school? That must have been really hard. And I would stand there and go, yeah, yeah, man, that was really hard. And I would believe it. They'd say to me, why would your parents leave you in boarding school for eight years? It's like, well, yeah, you know, I don't know. Like, you, they start to zipper it. They start to build the buttons. Because not only do we wear a costume, we love to fix each other's costumes. So that was the pivotal point in which I decided to remove that costume. I would not be the stories. I would not be who I thought I was going to be. So I invite you to be vulnerable. I invite you to be raw and exposed and really feel who you are without the stories that you believe to be true about you. Thank you.